Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to solve the circuit. In other words, we're going to find the equivalent or total capacitance of the circuit. The best way to approach that is to try to redraw the circuit in such a way that you can easily identify which are the capacitors that are in series and which are the capacitors that are in parallel. To do that, we can say that we have a junction here. Let's denote all the junctions. Let's call this junction A, junction B, junction C, and junction D. Actually, this is not really a junction, but it's a corner. I'll go ahead and mark it anyway. And what we can now do is redraw the circuit and we can keep track of where A, B, and C is so that you can see that we really have the same circuit even though we're redrawing them. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to draw the circuit as follows. This from A to B, we're going to draw it straight down. And then we have this capacitor up here between A and C. Oh, I got to be careful that I don't confuse this. Uh, let's see here. I have A, B, C. I'm going to call this something different. I'm going to call this E. Otherwise, I don't want to confuse the C's of the capacitances with the, the junction right there. So we have the capacitance. Oh, and I don't want to draw the resistor capacitance. Now we have a capacitor going from E to B. Well, let's draw that one vertically as well, like this, and draw a line in between here. And so now we have this capacitor, now we have a capacitor down here, and we have a capacitor up here. And then we'll connect it like that. Now we're going to identify A, B, E, and D on our second drawing and see what we get. A is still over here. B now becomes this entire portion, but that's really like it's one junction. There's no devices in between, so you can think of that as one point on the circuit. E is this point right here, and D is really this section right here. Again, it was not a junction, but at least you can see that where the equivalent position is on the circuit. So nothing has really changed, but now when we look at that circuit, it's a lot easier to figure out how to simplify the capacitors. These are still all capacitance C. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the last two capacitors and combine them. Now notice those are in series. So when we combine capacitors in series, we can say that C total is simply equal to the product over the sum, which is equal to C squared over 2C, which is equal to C divided by 2. So when I combine these last two capacitors, they combine into a single capacitor with a value of C over 2. So let's go ahead and draw that one. We draw everything else the same. So here we still have A. We have this capacitor here. We still have that capacitor over here. We have this capacitor. Let's connect it like this. And those two capacitors now will become one capacitor, which I can draw right here. So this is now a capacitor with capacitance C over 2. That's this one right there. We still have this capacitor, which is C, that capacitor C, and this capacitor C right there. All right, next I'm going to combine these two capacitors right here. Now these are in parallel, and when you add capacitors in parallel, you simply add them together. So that becomes a single capacitor with capacitance C plus a half C, which is 3 halves C. So the circuit now becomes the following. I still have this capacitor right here. I still have this capacitor. And now instead of having these two separate capacitors, I will now have a single capacitor. I can draw this one here with the capacitance of 3C over 2. 3 halves C. And then I can combine this right here. All right. And I can label these. They're still C and C. Next, I can combine these two capacitors. Now those are again in series, so when I combine capacitor in series, I have to do the product over the sum rule again. I can take C total is equal to the product, which is C times 3 over 2C divided by the sum of the two, C plus 3 over 2C. In other words, this becomes 3 divided by 2C squared divided by a whole C plus 3 half C, that would be 2 halves plus 3 halves, which is 5 halves C. 5 over 2C, 
and this C cancels out with this C, this 2 cancels out with that 2, this becomes 3 divided by 5 times C, and that will be those two combined. So let me then draw the circuit over here. We have this, oh, no, we don't have that capacitor anymore because we've combined the two. We still have this capacitor, which has capacitor in C, and then I've combined those two capacitors, and I'll draw those over here. So this capacitance together will be 3 over 5C. And let me do a little better job of that. 3 divided by 5C. All right, so now I have two capacitors which are in parallel. I can combine those two now. Again, when capacitors are in parallel, you simply add them together. This now becomes a single capacitor. When you add them together, it's C plus 3 half C. So C plus 3 over, not, not halves, but 3 fifths C, which is equal to 5 fifths plus 3 fifths, which is 8 fifths C, which is 1.6 C. So this becomes 1.6 times the capacitance of these capacitors. And this is what we call the equivalent circuit, and the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1.6 C. And that's how we do that. Again, a quick review. If you end up with something that doesn't quite look simple enough where you can't figure out which are the capacitors in parallel and in series, you can redraw the circuit. Remember that you have your joints and particular points on the circuit recognize that nothing changes. You can verify that this is exactly the same as that. Now you can recognize when you have resistors in series and when you have resistors in parallel. And simply, you simplify them starting from the far end of the circuit and work your way back to where the connection is right there. And that's how it's done.